119 below on skills, individual development. And I'm also a coach from one of the group of the teams, 2,000 kids that compete with against 98 kids. So they need a special, special care because they usually don't have success. So we, we need to be careful how we push them and how much we push them. But I'll go through that. So as you know, in this you might know this stadium quite well. Uh, this is part of our history. So we are one of the biggest clubs in Portugal with a notable growth in the last years. Uh, Braga used to be a normal mid-table club, but uh, in the last 10, 20, 20 years we came to uh, consolidate his position and in the last years, the last decade, it's been the perfect decade for us. We won the best Sporting Progress Award in 2011. Europa League finalist here in Dublin, uh, UEFA Intertoto Cup winner in 2009, then the cup disappeared so we will be the last ones to win it. No chance to steal it from us. Uh, and we are regular presence in UEFA competitions and title challenger in Portugal. In the last two years we fight for the, for the <coughs> title to the last rounds. Uh, we are also in Portugal, all of the clubs are multi-sports, so we have a lot of other sports with international uh, athletes that play, that goes to the Olympics in volleyball, hockey, handball and things like that. Good decision making. Why? Because we believe in this. You can have the best under 19 team in the world, but only one or two will be promoted to the senior team. So our goal should not be having the perfect team that, oh, my under 14s play perfect football. I don't care about that. I, don't care, I care about which one are the best players, obviously we should play good football to help developing them, but the main focus should be on the player and his relation with the team, and not the other way around. Not the team and then the player, okay? That's how we see it. Uh, also, the reason why I'm telling you all this, because I want you to think a little bit more about what you are going to see in the practical session, okay? I want you to, to think why we do it this way. So, how? Through a clear vision, uh, we created this youth program with similar training methods, player strategies at every age group. So basically we try to create an, an optimization of the selection process, the development process, the evaluation process and the other departments that I'm going through now. So in terms of the selection, we have scouts working in our region. We don't, we don't do uh, national coverage in terms of scouting until under, four, under 15s. We just want to be the best as we can in our re own region. Okay, so we want to have the best players in our region. So yes, we are those bad clubs that people like to say that oh, those guys come and steal our players. No, we don't steal them. We create a better environment for them to reach the top. And if they reach the top, the club that started will also get refunded about that if he ever reached professional. Okay, but we try to do it as soon as possible. It's for us. It's not successful to get a kid with on under 17 and say, oh, we developed them. No, we try to pick them as soon as possible so that they grow up with our mentality, with our ideas. So we like to have more, we created more coverage, which means being, attending more games, having more people work with us to see the kids. Then more specifications, what do I mean with this? Not just, oh, this kid is good. Why is he good? He looks at a kid, he thinks a kid is good because of this. He looks at a kid, he thinks because... We decided to for them to search three specific things, quite general, but speed, technique, and the way he relates, when I mean technique, it's the, the way he relates with the ball, elegance, let's talk about elegance, okay, and aggressiveness. He needs to be aggressive. If he's just like a relaxed kid, we don't, we don't want him. We don't want him. If, if, we, if he only has one of these three, if he has these three things, Oh, we are going to chase him and look at him a little bit better. If he only has one, he needs to be top at that one thing. So we try to develop the other things while he's, he's with us. Okay? Uh, and also, more demand, which is this. It's not just like, oh, this kid is tall. I don't care about the size. The only, this is a sentence that I said and I'm proud that I invented. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say, it. I, the only size that I care is the size of their ambition. Period. If you look at the final European finals and World Cup finals, the average of the best team in the end, the average size was one, 180 centimeters. Don't, don't ask me in inches because I, don't, I use the metric conver conversion, so I have no idea. But that means Iniestas, Xavi's and guys like that. Okay? So for me the size only matters if, if they want to be 
if you want you want to be a goalkeeper in Braga yes there is a standard size for you to start to be a goalkeeper but when they are 10 years old eight years old I don't know how big is he is, is, is he going to be so I don't care about the size I care about his ability if he's successful he can even be like Messi which almost was a midget and is the best player in the world period so but we are still searching for this big guys that don't even know how to run so what our main mistake as coaches is you, you search for athletes and then try to teach them football we do it the other way around we search for football players then if they become athletes perfect okay